Yeah. Just put that all in. Hey everyone, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Hope you guys are all doing well. Today's video is a highly requested one and I'm super excited to share my tips with you all. Let's get into it. Do you want to learn how to get your serve from looking like this to this? I'm here to explain five areas of the serve that I focus on and what I do that can help you serve like a pro. The five areas that we'll focus on are one, the toss and the timing, two, the grip, three, having a loose arm, four, stance and body placement, and five, the service motion and serving technique. So the most important aspect of the serve is the toss. You want to try to have the same toss so you have a balanced, consistent serve. For my toss, I like to anchor my left arm to my thigh or inner thigh area because I found out when I have my arm out here or out here, my toss tends to get away from me. So let's say my arm's over here, maybe sometimes I get nervous and I'll throw it over here too far back. Or if my arm's over here, maybe my toss goes this way. So when I anchor my arm, my left arm, then it'll be the same starting position every time. It'll be more consistent. To test if you have a consistent toss or not is very easy. All you have to do is throw the ball up and see where it lands. If it lands in the same area every time, then you have a consistent toss. My toss probably lands a foot or a foot and a half in front of my left leg. So I'll show you now. So that's probably where my toss will land. Once you've tossed the ball, you don't want to immediately drop your left hand because that's gonna cause your body to go down and most likely your serve to go in the net. So once you toss it, hold it there, you know, until you actually hit the ball and try to have it in sync with your right hand. So when I toss it, I wanna hit, I bring it down and I hit. Instead of tossing it, bringing it down and then hitting, that's gonna mess up your serve. How you toss the ball also affects the timing. I personally like a lower toss just because it keeps it simple and you don't have to think too much on the serve. A perfect example of this would be Nick Kyrgios' serve, whereas a higher toss would be a Zverev serve. A perfect example of why I like a low toss is if you look at the 2020 US Open final between Zverev and Dominic Thiem. Zverev has a really high toss and he ended up double faulting a few times in the fifth set tiebreaker to lose the Grand Slam title. When you have a high toss like Zverev, maybe you get a little tight after you toss it and it interrupts your service motion. Whereas if you have a low toss, you just throw it up and hit it. The key to a good timing of the serve is hitting the ball at the very top of the toss. It's very difficult to time the serve when the ball is coming down. Oh shoot. I almost hit the biker, dude. <laughs> for the grip, I use a continental grip that I use for my slices, backhands, volleys, and overheads. And it's the same grip that I used in my backhand drop shot tutorial. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure you go and check it out. You don't want to squeeze. You want to have a loose grip. You know, I, I like to spread my fingers out a little bit. I have this index finger and thumb to help control. The third aspect of having a good flat first serve is having a loose arm. A lot of people, when they try to hit a fast serve, they tighten up and they want to force the serve. It's not going to be consistent and it's not going to be that fast. So you want to have a very loose and lively arm. 
Everyone uses the analogy of throwing a football and you can't throw a football when you're tight, right? You gotta throw it when it's loose so it just goes. Also, I feel when you're tight on the serve, you tend to drop your elbow to try to, you know, try to get extra power and that's gonna alter your swing path, which is not right. And if you look at all the pros, their motion is pretty smooth and effortless and it's all in one motion. Now let's talk about your stance and your body placement. To have a good serve, you can't be facing the net when you hit the serve. More amateur players or beginner players, they like to face their body kind of to the opponent and that forces you to slice it a lot. <laughs> What I tell players to do is face your body to the bench and only rotate after you hit the serve. Some people are more extreme, you know, than others. What I like to do is probably my, my feet are 45 degree angle, maybe facing the net post. My body's, you know, this way and I'll just serve. Now that your body is turned to the side, you wanna think about what kind of stance you want. There's two kinds of stances. There's a pinpoint stance where you have the legs spread out and you bring the back leg up together and you jump to hit the ball. The other way is platform stance and that's when your legs are separated and you just go directly up to hit it. An example of pinpoint stances would be Nadal and Andy Murray. And an example of a platform stance would be Roger Federer. I used to have a pinpoint stance in college, but I later changed that to a platform stance because I felt like the pinpoint stance had too many moving parts and it complicated my serve a little bit. And during matches when I was nervous, I didn't make a lot of first serves. However, on the platform stance, I found out that when I had my legs out like Federer, I couldn't really use my legs and I wasn't getting any power on my serve. So I decided to change my platform stance a little closer to let's say a Gail Monfils or an Andy Roddick type of footwork. So that really helped me be able to jump a little bit better without having to move my back leg for a pinpoint stance. What I see a lot of amateurs do in terms of loading is instead of loading, they tend to th toss the ball up and move this front leg. Maybe it's because their toss is not consistent or maybe their balance is off. I'm not really sure, but they end up foot faulting a lot. So to try to fix this, I would say you need to learn how to load properly. What I like to do is I like to feel the weight in my legs and I'll transfer it from my heel to my toe. So when you go, you wanna have your legs and hit your knees and hip go forward to get you to load instead of going up and down. You want to go forward like that. So you wanna go heel and when you go forward, that's when you wanna go on your toes, which is very important to load with the feet. Now that we've talked about the body positioning and the toss, let's talk about the serve technique. So I have my left hand anchoring my leg and my right hand, I want it to dangle. You know, we talked about the loose arm, just have it dangling and you can kind of put it, you know, to the ball. Some people put the ball here or in the middle, like I like to put it, you know, here. And what I'm feeling now is I feel the pressure in my, in my the weight of the racket in my hand. I'm not tight in the shoulder, I'm not tight in the arm, the arm is loose and I have the feeling all in my, my hand with the racket. And so when I go up, I wanna go up together. I want this fast. Some people have this lag where they throw the ball up first and they have this racket lag and they think that'll generate more power. I didn't like that because it threw my timing off. What really 
got my serve to the next level was first a lower toss and second this together I want to bring my racket up as fast as possible so then I feel that my racket is up and ready to hit whereas if my racket is low my elbow is going to be low and my timing is going to be off because my racket is still hanging out over here more on the right arm I also don't like to have my right arm over this side of my body I feel like when I do that, it pulls my body this way or that way and it'll pull my serve more left or right. I like to keep my upper body kind of still and have my right arm on this side of my body. So when I go up, it just makes it easier and a little more simple. When you get to the top or the up position of your serve, you see a lot of the good new players like Holgerun and Carlos Alcaraz. They have their racket pointed up. And that's what I like to do also, because I feel I can get flat and on top of the ball to hit down on it. Some people, they have their racket angled like this or like that. I'm not really a fan of, but you can try out different ways and see what you like. I'm in the up position. My racket is pointing up and my wrist is loose so I can follow through on the serve. So I'll show you here. So my racket's up right here. It's up, right, and so up. To control where I want the serve to go, I use my hand and my fingers to hit the ball where I want it to go. So out wide, I'll go a little more this way, and then slice, I'll use my hand to curve it a little more you know, that way. So I use my hand to do it as I'm feeling the ball. And then when, after you hit the ball, you want to follow through across your body. Lastly, we'll talk about the landing and follow through of the serve. When you land, you wanna be balanced, like I said earlier. If you're landing and falling over or reaching for it, that just means that your toss was not good and you gotta fix your toss. So when you land, you wanna be balanced with this leg in the back and like maybe this arm out with your follow through like that and on your left leg. You don't wanna land you know, facing this way, you kind of want to turn a little bit and go like that. Now that you have all the elements to serve, let me take you through a typical routine that I go through before I serve. So I walk up to the baseline, I'll decide where I want to serve. So since I'm hitting a flat serve, I'll go out wide to show you. Go my routine, I have my base, which is turn body, platform stance, Get ready with the anchor, left hand, loose right hand. Toss up. That was smooth. I know that was a lot of information, but I hope this video helps you with your serve. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer them. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel because in the next video, I'll be showing you the simple drill that I used to be able to serve 110 miles per hour consistently. Thank you for watching and see y'all in the next one.